us and uh, you know the spirit of God is moving mm -hmm. and uh, today I want to bring uh, a simple word but a profound word that I'm, I'm hoping that will bless us all. I want to talk about what I've entitled healing strategies from James. Today I want to talk about healing and I'm going to believe to finish when God uh, allows me to finish. Now, <laughs> we will finish today. <laughs> that means that there will be a second part to it. <laughs> now, if you have been a Christian for quite a while, you realize that health, healing, is quite a thing in the body of Christ. And uh, I want to bring out my preaching from a pastoral point of view, you know, healing from a pastoral point of view. You know, health, healing, sickness, disease is something that has actually disturbed humankind for many centuries. And as Christ followers, we are not immune to this thing about health, sickness, etc. One of the questions that for many years being a Christian has disturbed me is why do Christians get sick and die? You know, and uh, I have been trying to study God's word because as I said, I've been a Christian for a long time, over 35 years. And I've heard a lot of God's word when it comes to healing. And in fact, in the room like this, if we, we ask about healing, we've got various views. Mm. But what we try to do in eternity is to try to bring a balanced view of things. Yeah. We don't want to get to the extremes of uh, you know, God's word, else we end up being in trouble. So today I want to try and bring some uh, balanced teaching on uh, healing, etc. You know, I mean, uh, from my, uh, my own experience, I, you know, I had my son, uh, you know, which most of you don't know, lived seven years and he died. So it, 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 it just uh, asked me, why? Because I believe I'm a little bit of a strong Christian. <laughs> How come that this happens to us? And then you need to think about the fact that Jesus died on the cross, isn't it? So we need to understand some of these things. That is why I've called the healing strategies from the book of what? James. So please have an open mind and listen to what I've got to say. Now, before the fall of man, we had nothing, we didn't need to worry about sickness. You know, people were not getting sick and dying before Adam sinned. But all change and everything change after the fall. And after the fall, we see that people live and they die. People live and then they die. But the book of James teaches us something, which are called the strategies, on how to deal with sickness and health in a community like this. And we need to look at it. So we want to try and look at some of the guidelines, some of the directions, some of uh, the teachings that uh, Paul, uh, sorry, James tells us to do, which will help us. I'll give a little background to uh, the, the book of James. Now, James was writing predominantly to the 12 tribes of Israel, who are the Jews, who are scattered abroad. You know, so God called Abraham, and Abraham gave birth to who? Isaac. And Isaac gave birth to, oh, come on, help me, Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons who became the nation Israel. So the Bible is the 12 tribes of Israel. It means all the sons of Jacob. But at a point, they had scattered out of the homeland of uh, Israel, and they were living around the world. And James wrote this letter to them to help them because they were going through a difficult time. In fact, the Jews, some of them had become Christians and becoming Christian as a Jew, it wasn't an easy thing to do. 
It's like switching religion. It was not easy during that time. But so they were scattered around and James wrote a letter to them to encourage them because he had heard that some of them were sick. Some of them were what? Sick. Some were not feeling well. Life was tough during their time. Because during that time, if you've done a little bit of history, you realize that Emperor Nero was the one who was reigning the world at that time. Now, Emperor Nero was quite a difficult, in fact, I use difficult, it's not even the right word. He was a very cruel and brutal, uh, you know, emperor. He used to just kill Christians for fun. Mm. So in those days, you don't go and say, I'm a Christian. No. You used to be a Christian underground. Because if anything went wrong, it's the Christians. If there was no rain, it's those people who are always praying. <laughs> if there's no food, get the Christians. <laughs> so it was tough to be a Christian. And it was tough to be a Christian and a Jew. Because it was like they deserted what? They are a main, uh, you know, uh, god given so it was difficult for them. And they were living in poverty, difficult times, and some were sick. There were Christians who were what? Sick. So we'll come back to that. So church, we have to understand, we live in a very lovely time where we can come to church, get up this morning, I took my Bible, took my things, I'm going to church, etc. But there are some parts of the world that you still can't do that. So we need to give praise to God when we have the opportunity to, uh, to come to, to uh, serve God and worship God. So Apostle James wrote to them to encourage them on what to do. How do they go about this? So they will read the first verse. I've just got two verses. The people are like, take, take, take. is everything all right today? <laughs> because I normally give them six or seven or eight or ten. But I want us to break this down. So let's read James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Is any among you sick? Not the question mark. Is any among you what? Sick. Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. 15. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person what? Well. And the Lord will raise them up if they have sinned. Note, if they have sinned. He said what? If they have sinned. That means that you can be sick without being what? Sinned. Yeah. That's right. And it's a very important thing. He said, if they have sinned, God will do what? Forgive them. So you can be sick without what? Having sinned. And we'll come to that. So he asks the question, which I break down. Is any among you sick? I'm going to break, uh, we'll be talking about that, and then the next time I'll talk about the rest. But today I want to just, you know, is any among you sick? I've told you that I've been a charismatic Pentecostal Christian for a very, very long time. Now, it's a question that you normally don't ask. <laughs> Is any among you what? Sick. Now, the emphasis is on the word what? Sick. And to, we need to understand the word sick. You see, it depends on where you came from. I came from Ghana, originally from Ghana. I've been here for about 33 years. But in my country that I grew up, when we say someone is sick, it means they are really right, sick. They are sick, going to the hospital, etc. Now, I came to this country 35, 33 years, and when they say someone is sick, <laughs> can the doctors help me here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's like they've brought up. It's a go and get a sick bowl. I said, oh, hang on, how can you get a sick bowl? The is sick. <laughs> He's been sick all over the floor. I said, what do you mean? Someone can be sick all over the floor. <laughs> so suddenly I realized that sickness means vomit here. But where I came from, sick means sick. 
<laughs> so we need to understand what the Bible is saying when it says what? Seek. <laughs> because if you bring it to uh, some other cultures, it means something very much different. <laughs> so he's saying that is any among you what? Sick. Is any among you sick? Now, you have to understand the Jews were, they had to meet to hear this word. They didn't have the Bible. It had not been written, church. So somebody will have the letter, run with the letter from Jerusalem and go and give it to the churches all around. Maybe there's one in uh, Norwich, the one in this, there's one where, uh, uh, should I mention it switch? Or today? <laughs> Colchester, London. So they are all over the place. And the letter will physically be given to them and it, they will gather them and read it out. Come on, we are privileged to have the book of God. And then we can read it anytime. I don't have it on my phone, when I'm in the bath or wherever. And they didn't have it, brothers. Somebody had to what? Read it out. So the person will come and stand here and say, yeah, we've got a letter, this letter is from Apostle James. And then I have to read it. And read, is any among you sick? <laughs> is any among you sick? The word sick comes from, if you go to the, the root, the root word of sick, which is asthenel. I read as well, A-S-T-H-E-N-E-O, if you want to write it down. A-S-T-H-E-N-E-O, with a little dot at the top there. <laughs> asthenel. Now, asthenel means that, you know, the condition of spiritual weakness, physical weakness, you know, and sickness, all forms of weakness, including bodily and uh, physical sickness. So, in, in other terms, Paul, uh, James is saying, is anybody physically what? Weak among us. Is anyone mentally weak among us? Is anyone psychologically what? Weak among us. Is anyone here who, uh, who is really going through a tough time? So he encompasses everything that you can think about that makes someone what? Unwell. Is anyone sick among us? Is anyone sick? It accommodates the whole measure of being unwell and being sick. And it calls in people who are marginalized, who feel that they are not accepted. You know, they all come in. So it's a broad way when it's asking, is anyone sick amongst us? Is anyone sick amongst us? It includes sudden sickness, it includes what? Long-term sickness, it includes chronic sickness, it includes anything that you can name it, the doctors can help us, and they are saying, is anyone sickness? Is sick amongst us? Someone might be there with heart, what? Arthritis, someone might be, have, might be having, you know, headache, migraine, he's the totality of what sickness is. And he stands there and says, is anyone sick amongst us? Today I ask, is anyone sick amongst us? Is anyone sick amongst us? In effect, James is speaking out of what? Humility. He's saying it out of what? Concern. He's saying it out of the fact that, come on, I've heard that the people are really unwell. Is anyone sick amongst us? And he's saying it with, with, with this attitude of no. We want to know, please, let us know, because we want to help you. We don't want you to hide it. There is a preacher, I'll mention names, because of what they were preaching. They preach and preach and preach. And uh, one day they realized that they tried to get up from bed, they couldn't get up. They were stuck in bed. So they had to get a wheelchair to go to the hospital. 
But when they were going to the hospital, they disguised themselves. So that nobody would see that they are going to uh, the hospital. But unfortunately for them, when they went to the hospital, they saw another church member at the hospital who was able to identify us. Ah, what are you doing here? I said, you two, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> is anyone sick amongst us? Apostle James is saying. He said, don't keep it to yourself. That is the attitude. Yeah. Don't keep it to yourself. Jesus said, has no one condemned you? Go, neither do I condemn you. And Apostle James uh, uh, is using the same kind of thing. Is anyone sick amongst us? Is anyone sick among us? He said, come out. He's trying to say, come out. We don't want to condemn you. We don't want to belittle the fact that you are sick. Yes, you are sick. Somebody just said, there is not a market you know, written sickness. Which one do you want? I want this. And put it on yourself. As some people get sick because they are sick, church. That's right. It is no fault of them. They just simply happen to what? To be sick. And this guy is teaching so that we can be what? Compassionate toward people. We can show what? Compassion. We can show empathy toward people. So come on, that person is sick. Let's get to them. Is anyone sick amongst them? He doesn't come with an arrogant attitude. He doesn't come with this attitude of, I've seen Jesus. He doesn't ask this question. Is anyone sick amongst us? <laughs> you know it's a different situation, isn't it? Uh, that, oh, is anyone sick amongst us? That is why, open your arms. You say, oh, please, we want to see. Come, come on. But is anyone sick amongst us? How can you be sick? <laughs> Have you not heard the word of Jesus? That, come on, we are charismatic. Come on, come on. We are... <laughs> How can you be sick? Did you not resist it? <laughs> yes, I'm teaching and people understand where I'm coming from. Uh, you must resist that disease. Cast it out. Say, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> where is your faith? Yeah. One of the things that used to really worry me when I was a like, grown up, he said, Oh no, you don't have faith. I said, Please show me. I will go and buy it. <laughs> <laughs> because everyone went to until you don't have faith. <laughs> Because I was so analytical. And so, I mean, I did science. So anything, you must prove it. <laughs> and then I could have said, no, no, you don't have faith. We pray and then we see the uh, uh, bathroom. So, no, no, I didn't receive it. I think I was about 10 times. <laughs> the prayer was no, no. I think there's something. I said, there's nothing there, brother. I'm not getting it. <laughs> he doesn't go and say, no. What have you, you want? You've got migraine. Migraine, you got to cut it out. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. What's the phone when you can't see what it is? Oh, oh, oh you are depressed. Did what? No, no, no. Yes, Christians can get depressed, brothers and sisters. And we need to be calm and, oh God. We need to be so humble, so gentle, so kind. Because you see, if it had not reached you, you'd never know how it is. That's right. I've been there. Yeah. Well, every week I've been in hospital. And I said, my God, what is this? I mean, I pray those days. This time I'm, uh, you know. Baby, <laughs> 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 those days. <laughs> I read the Bible and said, you know, I need to sleep. I need to what? Slumber. Then poverty, I said, now nah, lie. Poverty. <laughs> so I get up. Hey, man, there is a person. Man, man, there is a person. Kill a man, hold a man. Three hours, four hours, I'm on it. I said, what? How can sickness come and hit me like that? But he did. What I'm saying is that at times, we live in a falling world. And we have to understand, we need to show empathy to people who are unwell. Yes. 
We need to show a lot of empathy. We need to show a lot of what? Sympathy. Now, the, uh, the medical field will show empathy means you put yourself in that person's shoes. That's right. Then you feel the way they feel. Then when you are talking, oh, I know how you feel. You know, you can't go to a labor and say, come on, push, push. Please. <laughs> you know, They'll kick you out. <laughs> Church, he, uh, James, he said, is anyone sick amongst us? Come on, call the elders. Let them know. We want to know, and then we can touch on it. We want to know, we want to stand, we want to feel with you. At times, look, why did those people, uh, that person who was paralyzed, and then they had to remove the roof, and his four friends brought him down. Yeah. He couldn't bring himself down. He couldn't, so that is what, uh, uh, you know, James is saying. At times, people need to stand with you, and pray with you, and encourage you. At times, even cook for you. Is anyone sick amongst us? Let us know. We don't want to belittle any sickness. Yeah. Because we are not in the person's shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to say, ah, what happened? Is it a sin? Did you sin? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Bible said. If, if what? You have sinned. If you have sinned, God will forgive you. Yeah. So if you haven't sinned, then there's no need to cast out any sin, isn't it? <laughs> because some people are attacked. If you have a child that has been born and then they have sickle cells, have you sinned? No. You can't do that, but you have to still what? Help the family. That's what I'm coming from a pastoral point of view. In a church like this, in a big uh, congregation, we will have people who are not well. And we have to be what? Compassionate towards them. Please, let's be compassionate when we hear people are unwell. Let's show some love. Let's not say, oh man, no, this will never, never happen to you. Yeah, he said, if you have not happened to you, sleep, because tomorrow you never know. Yeah. Bad things happen to what? Good people. Paddy has preached that a lot. And two weeks ago, bad things happened to me. I didn't tell anyone. I was coming from uh, Cornwall. I mean, I was, my car is always serviced. End of story. If I hear him, my children is going to service. I can hear noise in my car. And my, my children said, but can't you hear? I said, yes, they're tired, you know, it's wobbling. So I was coming, I was coming and I reached the M25. And I was coming home because I planned the day. You know, it was about 12 o'clock on the M25, past three, and then there's, a, uh, you know, traffic. And the car stopped. So what do you mean? You can stop. <laughs> and I was in the middle lane. On the most busiest, uh, most busiest motorway in the in the Europe, I started the car, yam, 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 me, me, me. <laughs> and it's automatic. <laughs> and I had my wife. He said, "What is happening? What is happening? No, no, no. The car is not starting. It doesn't have to stop. I took it for seven last month. How can it break down in the middle of the? Please, in the middle." <laughs> I had to come out of the car and then all the cars are like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a good man <laughs> but my car broke down I love God but my car broke down <laughs> So we are good people, and at times, things happen. Yeah. <laughs> if you ask the women here, a lot of them don't share their story, mothers. And as some of them have had miscarriages. It is not their fault. That's right. It just happens. Yes. So what do we have to do? We have to show empathy. We have to show love. We have to be compassionate. Please. It is so important. Let's reach out to people. Let's reach out to people. Let's reach out to people. Yeah, I know you want to hear what happened. Yeah, the AA came to tow my car. <laughs> 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 Took the car to a, a you know, 
uh, you know, the one of the, what do you call it, the service place. After one hour, the car just started and I just <laughs> But I've got news for you, I haven't driven the car to now. Because <laughs> I wanted to go back to the service to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Amen. So God brought us home. But bad things at times happen to what? Good people. Please. Don't ever get it. What's wrong with him? What do you have? Let's move around. I mean, Christians can become some, some funny people, honestly, at times. You know, so person, don't go near them. Don't go near them. They've got something. <laughs> There's nothing there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's support one another. James is saying, is anyone sick amongst us? Is anyone sick amongst us? Now, if you go down, you realize that the first century church, the first century church, they did not have this kind of theology that we have right now. They didn't have this theology that, you know, uh, uh, once you are saved, etc., sickness can't come to you. No. They had a balanced view of sickness. Yeah. That is why they reach out to people. That is why he's saying that, no, if anyone's sick, let us know. We'll rather stand with you and pray. They had a balanced view of what Christianity has to do. And please, we have to have a balanced view if you are going to reach many in our church, if you are going to be of, of good to people. Amen. We have to do that. We have to do that. Because Jesus did that. He never said, yeah, mm, you, have, you have seven demons in you. Then, uh, you know, I can't talk to you. No, he was compassionate. In fact, the Bible says Jesus always moved with compassion before he healed people. He always moved with compassion. That's why he cried at uh, what? When Lazarus died. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. We must have to be, we must be moved with compassion. So mercy with people. Oh God. We must be merciful towards people. People are going to be sick. Because we live in a fallen world. The germs haven't gone yet. They are still there multiplying. You can ask the doctors, they will tell us. We had a what? COVID-19. And it mutated to COVID something else. <laughs> and then when it gets, uh, you know, then it rears its ugly hair with something else. Why? Because we still live in the fallen world. And until Jesus comes and uh, we are all not here, these things are going to happen. So if they are going to happen, how do we handle it? How do we manage it? How do we deal with it? Eternity Church don't want people to come here and then, you know, they feel un uh, unwelcome or it it it's not a place where they don't care about me because, you know, they, they realize I've got a migraine. And we don't want people to hide. We don't want you to macho up. So I've got to show that I'm, I'm strong, you know, you know. And so even if I've got this, hey, I must, uh, no, please, come and talk to someone. Yes. And next week I'm going to touch on that. Because by touching and talking to someone, we might pray and then we can signpost you somewhere where you can get help. Yes. It is very important, please. We don't want you to be in your house and then think, no, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to talk about what the oil really is. Because that is something that, look, I've studied this thing. It's taken me years to deal with this. Just a critic. Because oil in those days was used for something else. It was medicinal, mm. as well as other things. And next week, I'll touch on it. That's why Jesus said, that person, you know, who was uh, at the thief or whatever it is, he put them in the inn so that they, what, they will have their wounds what? Smeared with what? Oil. So at times, you must take that tablet. Amen. 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 So you don't leave your tablet around when it's being prescribed. And so you know, I'm praying and then, you know, then we have to now try and look for the tablet and bring it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being blessed? Yes. I know we've got different theological, but I'm here. I'm the pastor and I'm bringing you the... <laughs> If I can just raise it a little, I, I have done my master's in this thing. So I know it. I did my master's in theology. And I, one of the things I learned about was health and healing. Because it troubled me so much. 
So we have to understand and have a balanced view of things. So we don't go one way that Jesus cast that thing. Because Jesus did it immediately. It must also have Jesus said that you lay hands on the sick and what? They would they do what? Yes, recover. You go to the, uh, uh, the theater people, they tell you what recovery means. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you are out there. At times you are there for an hour, two days, etc. And if you are not working, they take you to IC or IC. Yeah. And you stay there for uh, three weeks. Recovery. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Recovery. And if the baby comes early, they take the baby to what? To what? The Niku or Skabu or how many please? What's the name? Yes. The, 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 and then they, they what? They recover. So don't use logic to try and answer what God's way. He said recover. He didn't say instant. I hope someone has been blessed. Yes. Let's read the word well and then we will be blessed. I go for what God said. It's not recovering. And at times I have to recover with paracetamol and then I just take it. <laughs> you can go on with your headache. I just take it. Yeah, I take it, I take it. I say this medicine today in my hand. I pray the potent of God on me. Uh, all, uh, all what? I just take it. All side effects out. No, <laughs> Someone's theology, but I know where I am, and I know we have got to get a balanced view of this. If not, some people are going to die foolishly. Yeah. <laughs> They're giving you a tablet for blood pressure. Say, no, I pray, and I'm not taking it. Are you God? Please take it. Take it. Because God helped us to develop these things. I, I don't understand us as Christians. We won't take a tablet. But we want the Lamborghini to stay. Is a human being that created the Lamborghini, man? <laughs> but why do you want to sit in a Lamborghini but not take a price <laughs> You see our mindset. You want a nice car. Yes. Is, come on, I mean, that's, that's even going to be oh, <laughs> That's the one I want. But when they give you the price, you say, no, no, this one, there's a government, I'm not taking it. It's up to you. I'll take the paracetamol, I'll go for the film, we'll give it, and then I'll give it up. Hallelujah! I don't know, why do you take house insurance? Hmm? <laughs> because you don't want your house to get burnt in it. So if you really believe it, then don't have a house insurance. Don't have a car kind of insurance and then you wait and see. Someone will hit your car. Then you realize that I needed a car kind of insurance. Me, I've got a car kind of insurance. I've got a house insurance. I've got the death insurance as well. What is it, the funeral one? Oh, yeah, you know, that one took a long time. You said so we need the funeral. So no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm calling it. Yes! Amen! I don't want to. But then, I know people who didn't have it, who died, and then they didn't have life insurance, and they couldn't pay their mortgage. Ah! No! I got it. So if God calls me, because I don't know when he's going to call me, yes, I want to leave what? Uh, uh, seven, what? Uh, Moses it was. Three score and ten. But maybe I get to three score and then I don't get a ten. Then my family is what? Have it. Amen. Please, let's not use logic. We have got to let God's word be God's word. Am I blessing somebody here? Please. Is anyone sick amongst us? If anyone is sick amongst us, we don't want to put you down. I'm going to end that with that. Please, we don't want to see it open the down. Come, speak to some of us. Speak to the leaders. And we'll stand with you. And we'll pray with you. And we'll trust what God can do. And then, you know, we'll direct you to people like Dr. Abby and the rest. They can tell, tell you to where you have to go. I can tell them, this one, go and see your GP. I pray, but may the God grant you favor with the GP so the GP will listen to you. Amen. Yeah. That's if you get appointment. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> 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 so, 
Oh, Amen. Oh, yes, if not, then uh, rather, uh, this will not be work. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Nathan. He's a pharmacist. Because God uses some of these things to work us and help us. I don't have time. For the only thing, then I had malaria about 50 times. In my life. I mean, they, 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 they just went on the pump. And, not the pump. and I went for the chloroquine. I went for the chloroquine, camoquine, mapoquine, and all the things. And I am here because I took it there. But if I didn't take it, maybe I won't be just speaking to you. You get what I mean? So I can't go and use this thing to help us. Oh, please. Let's understand. Is anyone sick amongst us? Come and then we pray with you. Next week, if I'm here, I'm going to go into what uh, uh, James is talking about. So that we can be blessed as the people of God. Stand on the feet. Amen.